Often people assume that in order to take photographs of the stars, you need a fancy camera and a big telescope. Well, I'm here to tell you that that is a load of crap. I'm Walt, this is Delta Astrophotography, and tonight we're gonna photograph outer space with this. A simple Canon camera and a $100 50 millimeter lens, also known as the Nifty 50. The Nifty 50 is an absolute light gathering monster. At f1.8, this little lens can see in the dark, but of course that comes with problems. At f1.8, it's hard to get everything in focus. Even at infinity focus, things are still a bit fuzzy. What does this mean for an astrophotographer? That depends on if you have a star tracker or not. Without a star tracker, I believe you absolutely need the light gathering power of f1.8. Now, with a star tracker, that's fine. You can stop it down to f3.5 or f4, and things will look much cleaner. Tonight's target is the entire constellation of Orion, sometimes known as the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. It is absolutely full of goodies like the Horsehead and Flame Nebula, the Orion Nebula, the Witch Head Nebula, Barnard's Loop, the Star Betelgeuse, and off to the side, we'll even see the Rosette Nebula. Unlike the star behind me, the targets we're shooting tonight are quite dim, so you're gonna to wanna to drive out to a dark location and don't forget to charge your batteries. Fortunately for me, I live out in the middle of nowhere. I highly recommend doing this with a star tracker, but if you don't have one, that's fine. You can still shoot wide open, F1.8, uh, ISO 3200, 6400, and with a full frame camera, a shutter speed of about 10 seconds, a little less with a crop sensor. Um, and then you just take a few hundred photos and stack them in your stacking software. But with a star tracker, things are gonna be so much easier. You'll have ISO 800, um, aperture of 3.5 or four, give you uh, much cleaner looking stars. And you can shoot two to three minutes. And that's what I'm doing tonight. Did you hear that? This guy again. Let's look in the space bucket and see what kind of things we need for tonight. Definitely gonna want my star tracker. I don't think we're gonna be auto guiding tonight. How did that get in there? Ah, here we go. The ball head attachment for my star tracker. I actually haven't used this in a while. Here we go. Okay, the sun is setting. It's time to go outside and get set up and it's gonna be an easy one. Now, after I get set up, I'm gonna take a test shot with and without the star tracker just so you can see, A, why I like to use them, but B, why you don't really need them with this lens. So, let's go outside and do this. All right, I got my star tracker set up on the base. Now it's time for polar alignment. If you don't already know polar alignment, it's a pretty simple uh, procedure. Just kind of look up through the polar scope here and find the North Star and get it situated right where it needs to be in the circle that's inside the polar scope. Now, for those of you who own the Sky Guider Pro, you may notice that there's two circles on the inside. Well, I think the inner one is for the Northern Hemisphere and the outer one is the Southern Hemisphere. That confused me for a long time. Once you're polar aligned, then we'll add the camera to the tracking mount. Orion will be that way, so I'll just go ahead and turn the camera in this direction. There are going to be lots of bright stars to focus on, Sirius, Betelgeuse, those are great targets. So basically just turn your live view on and point them right at that star and just turn your focus ring until they are as small of a pinpoint as possible and that's all there is to it. If you're having a hard time seeing anything through your live view screen, you could either A, still have your lens cap on, B, not have your ISO and shutter speed high enough. Um, you need it to be really bright. Uh, or C, you're just really out of focus. And one of the best ways I can get around that is maybe point at my camera at a street light in the distance and auto focus on that, switch it back to manual focus and then fine tune my focus from there. Farm vehicles. And the last thing you need to do is connect your intervalometer 
This is the key to the whole setup because you need to take multiple exposures, as many as possible, to get the detail out and to get rid of all the noise. So we'll just set this to take 60 photos while I'm using a star tracker. If you're not using a star tracker, I'd recommend a few more, maybe a few hundred even. Sudden, Sudden interruption, interruption intervalometer, intervalometer tutorial. tutorial. Okay, first things first, you gotta connect this thing to your camera and then switch your camera into bulb mode. Now we'll look over here on the left, our first setting is self. That's pretty much the countdown. It counts down to when it starts taking photos. Next, we have long, which is just how long your exposures are. I have mine set to two minutes. You can do anywhere from one second to several hours for an exposure. Interval is how long between exposures or shots. And I have mine set to five seconds. That's enough time for the sensor to cool down for just a second in between shots. And number, that's how many shots it's going to take. I have mine set to 65. You can set yours to whatever you want. And finally, there's beep, which is a beep. And that's all there really is to it. I'm gonna wait for it to get completely dark and I'm gonna go make dinner. It's not a bad night to be having dinner outside. Okay, everything's framed up and the test shots look great. I'm gonna let this roll for a few hours and go inside and get warm. I'll come back out when the shots are done, put the lens cap back on and take a few dark frames to stack for noise. And that's it for the night. I'll let you know how it goes tomorrow. So I think everything turned out great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you the test shots I did, and then finally the processed image. All right, so here's the first image taken without a star tracker. This is ISO 3200, shutter speed of 10 seconds, and an aperture of f2.8. I thought I was doing 1.8, but apparently when I switched my camera to bulb mode, it switched it to f2.8 without me knowing. Oh well. Um, so. In here, we can definitely see the Orion Nebula, a little bit of the Horsehead and Flame Nebula. I can, I can almost start to see Bernard's Loop wrapping around here. There's a little bit of red. Now, if we zoom in, I do see that the stars are starting to stretch a little bit. I think f1.8 and a shutter speed of eight seconds might be better, but still there's a lot of detail hidden in this image. And if I were to stack a bunch of these together, I could pull that detail out very easily. So a star tracker, not really needed. But now let's look at the star tracker image. First glance, this is a lot brighter. And when we zoom in, the stars are definitely not stretched out. They're pinpoints of light. You can see a lot of detail over here in this Orion Nebula and definitely seeing the horse head start to come out and the flame nebula. These are so much easier to process once you've stacked a bunch of them. And now for a little bonus. A few nights ago, I was trying to photograph the same constellation with no star tracker, just camera lens and tripod. And to my eyes, it looked clear out that night, but apparently it was cloudy and hazy. And this is what happened. Kind of looks neat. These are not usable in stacking and I could not pull any detail out of this most likely, but it's still uh, kind of a delightful little surprise. I would almost want to just process this and put this out as its own separate image. Before I show you the final process image, I just want to say thanks for watching. Sorry if I went over anything a little too fast. Please feel free to leave a comment below and let's have a conversation. My next video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how I processed the image you're about to see. So please subscribe, give me a like, and as always, stay spacey, clear skies, and good night. <laughs>